Okay, so here's the last lesson for section 2.1. In section 2.1, so far we've learned how to find the midpoint of a line segment, and we've also learned how to find the equation of a median of a triangle. Um, in this last lesson for 2.1, we're going to learn how to find the equation of a right bisector of a line segment. Okay? The definition of a right bisector is that it is a line that passes through the midpoint of a line segment and intersects it at a 90 degree angle. So the important parts here, um, passes through the midpoint okay, of a line segment. So you can see why this would be in the midpoint section. Um, of a line segment intersects at a 90 degree angle. Okay, So it's perpendicular to the line. Okay, So a right bisector is what you see right here in green. Okay, I've got a line AB. This green line is the right bisector of it because it intersects it at a 90 degree angle and it goes through the midpoint of AB. So that's what a right bisector is. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to find the equation of a right bisector. A right bisector is a line. We know the equation of any line we can write in slope y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So that's our goal, to figure out the equation of the right bisector in y equals mx plus b if I'm given the coordinates of the two endpoints of a line. I need to be able to find the equation of the right bisector of that given line. Okay. So the steps to find the right bisector of line AB, we first have to find the slope of AB. Okay? You might say, why find the slope of that line? I don't want to write the equation of that line. But the, if we can find the slope of AB, we can easily find the slope of a line perpendicular to AB. So if we find the slope of AB, we then use that to find the slope of the line perpendicular to AB by taking the negative reciprocal of the slope we got for AB. Okay. Negative reciprocal is a fancy way of saying um, flipping, the, flipping the fraction and changing the sign. So if our slope was 1 over 3 of AB, to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector, we just flip that fraction. So the perpendicular slope, this is the sign for that perpendicular slope, is equal to, we flip that fraction, so it now becomes 3 over 1, and we change the sign. This fraction has a positive value, so we make this fraction negative, give the fraction a negative value. Okay, so that would be the perpendicular slope. If a line had a slope of one-third, the perpendicular slope of that would be negative three over one. Okay. So the next step, so we now have the slope of the perpendicular line. We have the m. Okay. In order to figure out the y-intercept, okay, in order to write the equation of line, we need slope and y-intercept. So we have the slope. We figured that out by finding the slope of a, b, and then flipping the fraction and changing the sign to get the perpendicular slope, the negative reciprocal. Okay. So we have the slope. Now to figure out the y-intercept of this line, we have to first be able to plug in values for x and y in order to solve for b. Okay, x and y stand for the coordinates of any point on this line. Okay, we know the perpendicular bisector, the right bisector, passes through the midpoint of AB. We know the midpoint formula. So we can find the midpoint of AB if we're given the coordinates of A and B. We can plug it into the midpoint formula and find that point. Okay. We can then use the midpoint and the perpendicular slope to find the y-intercept of the line. So we plug in for m, x, and y, solve for b. We can then write our final equation for the right bisector okay, by plugging in for x and y. All right, so that's enough explanation. Let's do an example, and hopefully it'll make sense for you. Well, first let's practice taking perpendicular slopes. Okay. So note, to find the perpendicular slope, you must invert the fraction and change the sign of the fraction. So flip and change the sign. So if my slope is negative 1 over 2. The perpendicular slope, remember that's the perpendicular sign. I've got two perpendicular lines here. The perpendicular slope is equal to, I flip that fraction. So instead of 1 over 2, it becomes 2 over 1. And I'm going to leave the fraction as a positive value. This fraction has a negative value, so I'm going to leave this as positive. I changed the sign. It went from negative to positive. Okay, so the perpendicular slope is 2 over 1, which 2 over 1 is equal to 2. Okay, this one. If my slope is 5, I know any whole number is over 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. Okay? Perpendicular slope, I'm going to flip that fraction. It's going to become 1 over 5, and I'm going to change the sign. Since this is all positive, I'm going to make this fraction have a negative value by putting a negative out front. Okay? So the perpendicular slope is negative 1 over 5. I flipped the fraction and changed the sign, made it negative. Okay? For this one here, um, if the slope is 3 over 7, slope equals 3 over 7. My perpendicular slope, all I have to do, flip the fraction. 7 is now on top, 3 is on the bottom now. And because this is a positive value fraction, I put a negative out front, make this a negative fraction. OK? 
Okay, so that's how you find perpendicular slopes. So let's do an example now of finding a right bisector. So write the equation of the right bisector of the line with endpoints a negative one four and b seven negative two. I'm going to start just by making you know just a very rough sketch. I know the line isn't perfectly horizontal, um, or it shouldn't be perfectly horizontal. So um, well, that's okay. This is just a rough sketch. Just help me visualize what I'm finding. Okay. So these are my points. I want to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Okay, the line that goes through AB at a right angle through the midpoint. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do, step number one, find the slope of AB. Find the slope of the line, the original line. Okay, slope is equal to rise over run, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to use my two points. I will use A as my first point, so that will be my x1, y1. Remember, every point has an x and a y coordinate, okay? And point B will be my x2 and y2, okay? So I'm going to try and find the slope of this line. And remember, you could have used A as your second point. This could be x2, y2, and this could be x1, y1. You get the same answer. Just make sure each point has an x and a y, and the 1s stay together, and the 2s stay together, okay? Don't mix them up, okay? So now to find the slope of this line, I need to do... So my slope equals y2 minus y1, so negative 2 minus 4 over x2 minus x1, 7 minus negative 1. If I simplify this, negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 7 minus negative 1, 7 plus 1 is 8. Put that in the lowest term, 2 goes into 6 and 8. 2 goes into 6 um, 3 times, so I'll have negative 3. 2 goes into 8 4 times, negative 3 over 4. That's my slope in lowest terms. Make sure you always put it in lowest terms. Okay, so there's my slope. Perfect, there's my slope of AB. So if I wanted to write the equation of the line AB, that would be useful, but I don't, okay? I want to write the equation of the line that is perpendicular to AB, and it goes to the midpoint of AB. So if I know the slope of AB, I can find the slope of the line perpendicular to it just by taking the negative reciprocal of it. So just by flipping it and changing the sign, okay? So if my slope is negative three over four, my perpendicular slope, I'm gonna flip it. Four is now gonna be on the top, three is only gonna be on the bottom. And because this fraction had a negative value, I'm going to leave this one having a positive value. So the sign has changed, okay? So I've flipped it and I've changed the sign. My perpendicular slope is 4 over 3. Good. So remember, my whole goal is to write the equation y equals mx plus b. I need to know the slope and the y-intercept. I know the slope now. The slope is 4 over 3. In order to solve for the y-intercept, I need to first find a point on the line. Every point has an x and y coordinate, okay? If I find a point on the line, I can sub in for x and y. I know the slope, I can solve for the y-intercept. I know a point on the line, a point on the line, I know this right bisector goes through the midpoint of AB by definition. Okay, so if I find the midpoint of AB, I will know a point on the right bisector. So all I have to do now, find the midpoint of AB. Um, once again, I'll let A be my first point, my x1, y1, B be my second point, x2, y2. Plug all that into the midpoint formula, which we know how to use. So I'll add the x-coordinates of the endpoints, negative 1 plus 7, divided by 2, to get the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And then to get the y-coordinate of the midpoint, just add the y-coordinates of the endpoints, 4 plus negative 2. Divide that by 2 to find the average. Negative 1 plus 7, so, so simplify these fractions now. Negative 1 plus 7 is 6 over 2. 4 plus negative 2, 4 minus 2 is 2 over 2. Simplify those. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. There's my midpoint of um, AB. Okay, my midpoint is at 3, 1. So that is an X and a Y coordinate of a point on the right bisector. Okay, so I now have um, the midpoint is 3, 1, and I have the slope. So I have an X and Y coordinate, and the slope I can plug in for M, X, and Y. Y is 1. M is 4 over 3. My x is 3. Every whole number is over 1, don't forget. Okay. I'm going to write it like that just so when we're multiplying the fractions, it will be uh, more obvious what's happening. Okay. So I've plugged in for everything. I know slope, x, and y. x and y is a point on the line. Um, and now I can solve for b because I have an equation with one unknown. I can solve for that. Okay. So our whole goal now, just use our algebra, get b by itself, and figure out the value of b. Okay. 
First thing I have to multiply fractions. Remember the rules for multiplying fractions. Just multiply the numerators and then the denominators. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 1, the denominators, is 3. 12 over 3 is a nice whole number. It's 4. Move the 4 to the other side. It could be by itself. So I'm going to subtract that 4 because it's positive on this side. Subtract it. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So my b value is negative 3. Okay? So I can now write the equation of the right bisector. I know the y-intercept of the right bisector, and I know the slope of the right bisector. That's what you need to fill in to write the final equation. Don't plug in for x and y in the final equation, just the slope and the y-intercept. So my final equation is y equals 4 over 3x minus 3. There's my final equation of the right bisector. The line that goes through AB at a right angle through the midpoint. Okay. Um, up here you could have noticed when I was multiplying these fractions, you could have noticed, um, you could have skipped a step and just seen since there's going to be a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom of the fractions um, and they're being multiplied, you could have just cancelled those out and it would have given you 4 over 1 which is 4. Okay. Um, that's just a little shortcut that you'll get used to, um, you'll get used to seeing the pattern of that. Okay. Let's do one more example, but before we do it, just just to help you understand why right bisectors are important, just to orient yourself, um, any point on a right bisector, so any point, here, 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 every point on that right bisector is equidistant from each end point. Okay? So the point here is the exact same distance from that end point as it is from that end point. This point here is the exact same distance from that end point as it is from that end point. Okay? So that's why right bisectors are useful. That's the application of them. Okay. Let's do one more example for good measure. Uh, I'll do a little bit less explanation for this one, just kind of go through the steps. Um, find the equation of the right bisector of the line segment with endpoints A14, B3, negative 2. Once again, I'm just going to, I like drawing my diagram just so I can visualize it. So here's my A14, here's my B3, negative 2. Okay, I need the equation of the line that goes to the middle of AB at a right angle. Okay, so I need to find the equation of that line in the form y equals mx plus b. So if I need it in y equals mx plus b, I'm going to need the slope. In order to figure out the perpendicular slope, I have to first find the slope with ab, and then take the negative reciprocal of that. So the slope of ab, here's my x1, y1, here's my x2, y2. Um, my slope is equal to y2 minus y1, negative 2 minus 4, over x2 minus x1, 3 minus 1. Simplify. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 3 minus 1 is 2. That gives me a slope of negative 3. Okay? Remember, any whole number is over 1. Okay? So my slope is negative 3 over 1. But I want the perpendicular slope. So my slope is negative 3 over 1 of AB. But I want the slope of the line perpendicular to it. I remember all I have to do is flip the fraction and change the sign because this had a negative. Um, the slope at a negative value, my perpendicular slope is going to be positive. So it's just going to be positive 1 over 3 is my perpendicular slope. Okay? So I want to write the equation in y equals mx plus b. I now have my slope. Good. All I need now is the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I have to first find a point on the right bisector so that I can sub in for x, y, x and y, and then be able to solve for b. Okay? I know a point on the right bisector. I know the right bisector goes to the midpoint of AB, so let's just find the midpoint of AB. Okay? Here's my x1, y1. Here's my x2, y2. Okay? To find the midpoint, choose the midpoint formula. Add the x-coordinates of the endpoints and divide by 2 to find the x-coordinate of the midpoint. Add the y-coordinates of the endpoints and divide by 2 to find the y-coordinate of the midpoint. Then simplify the fractions. 1 plus 3 is 4 over 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 2. So 4 plus negative 2 is the same as 4 minus 2, which is 2 over 2. Simplify. This gives me 2, 1. Okay? So I now have the midpoint of, uh, of line AB, and I know the right bisector goes through that midpoint. So I now have an x and a y coordinate um, of a point on the right bisector. So I know my midpoint. What was my midpoint? Um, 2, 1. So my midpoint is 2, 1. That's an x and a y. And my slope, what was my perpendicular slope? It was 1 over 3. Okay, 1 over 3. 
make sure you use the perpendicular slope, okay? Because we want the equation of the right bisector of the line perpendicular to AB. So we want to use the slope of that line, which is 1 over 3, okay? So now all we're going to do, we need to solve for B, the y-intercept. So we can plug in for M, X, and Y and solve for B. Y is 1, slope is 1 third, X is 2, plus B. Simplify, 1 third times 2, remember 2, every, fract every, whole number fra every whole number is over 1. Multiplying fractions, multiply the numerators, 1 times 2 is 2. Multiply the denominators, 3 times 1 is 3. Okay. Um, now I'm going to want to get B by itself, so I'm going to move the 2 over 3 to the left. So 1 minus 2 over 3 equals B. I'm going to continue this over here. Um, remember 1 is over 1. Every whole number is over 1. I want to be able to subtract 2 thirds. Okay? In order to subtract 2 thirds, in order to subtract fractions, I need common denominators. So I need this to have a denominator of 3. So that's the same as this one, so I need to multiply the denominator by 3. And then also multiply the numerator by 3 to keep the ratio equivalent. Okay? So that gives me 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 equals B. And then to subtract fractions, remember, keep the denominator the same, just subtract the numerator. So 3 minus 2 is 1. Leave the denominator alone. My B is 1 third. I now have my y-intercept. And I have my slope of the right bisector. So I can write the equation of that right bisector by plugging in for M and B. Don't plug in for X and Y in your final equation. Oh, that looks like an X. Um, so Y is equal to, oh, there it is. Okay, Y equals one-third X plus one-third. Okay, that's neat how that worked out. The slope and the y-intercept, they're both one-third. Cool, okay. So, once again, writing your final equation, plug in for slope and y-intercept. Okay? If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a message. Um, go to jensenmath.ca, check out the next lesson, get ready for tomorrow. Um, other than that, have a great night. Make sure you try the worksheet. Okay, see ya.